Definitely. She should yeah. absolutely have her own. Yeah, um, yeah. I hate the culture of like, well, I don't hate it, but I think that it can be harmful to young girls when they see um, elder woman or mid, mid-aged mid woman um, depending on a man for literally everything, which is, you know what? It's completely fine if the woman's okay with it, the man's okay with it, that's okay. But sometimes what ends up happening, especially in our community, is young see girls will see that. They'll see that in their mothers, their aunties, their grandmothers. They'll see that they depend entirely on the man for finances, mm. whatever it is. And that man will hit them around, throw them against walls. Oh, the yeah. domestic violence is I know you know it's bad within it our, community. our community. Yeah. Really um, and young girls will think that, okay, this is what I have to tolerate. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to, if in the event that I don't want to work, I don't want to go to school, I don't want to be my own person, I can just hitch a man and I can, <clears> he can <throat> do whatever he wants to me and I depend on him for finances. It's an equal trade off. Mm. That's no. the shit I don't like. Yeah. No. So I yeah. always try to, and I have younger cousins, 16 year old little girls, and I have two little brothers. One is 15, 16, and the 50. other is. <laughs> <She's only 50. laughs> 15. And the other is 13. So there's yeah. so many things that I have to help teach them alongside my parents as well because I've learned so many lessons at my age. Mm-hmm. But I think one thing that is so harmful for young Desi girls is that. A, the comparison aspect of social media, but also even just seeing what they see in our community and thinking that it's it's okay and we don't have to be our own person. All right, welcome back to Modern Brown Men episode i don't know which one it 18, is 18 19, 18 19 something like that around, around there, there. yeah, yeah. We're, we're just going with the flow now yeah at this point i'm not <laughs> even <laughs> but yeah welcome back uh we got a special guest today um yes, sir. a guest is uh who is a, quite an expert in uh in marketing in that sense and definitely want to welcome uh suvi sharma thank you and yeah but yeah no definitely um Let's get a brief introduction who you are and what your background is, for sure, yeah. Sure, so I'm Subi. Um, I love marketing. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it was so much fun to yeah. me. Um, it was definitely a whirlwind getting here and finding mm. out that I love marketing in this way because I've tried so many different things before I even started to consider marketing as a career. Yeah. But I would definitely say that that's my thing alongside business as well. And yeah, that's that's what I love. I love um, painting and embroidering, and <laughs> those are, that's the more fun thing about me. I yeah, always think yeah, that hobbies. people's education and their careers <clears throat> are the least interesting parts of them, yeah. and I think their integrity and their character really makes who the person is. So yeah. I love um, <laughs> uh, cats, dogs, animals. <laughs> Put on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. That's why I'm here. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. No, no, no. Thank you for taking you know time. Um, out of your day um and, and you know the funny thing is you're the first woman that we brought on our podcast <laughs> yeah. so you know if you wanna you know we're breaking barriers yeah because <laughs> um you know we were talking about milk before um i think it's important to especially in our community to have a presence of not only like the men's perspective but women's perspective as well mm-hmm. i think a lot of the time we we neglect um their the journey uh what it means what are the hardships they go through? Because like, I've been talking to Mook, like how he brought his dad on last time. So I'm like, you know what? Like mm-hmm. I was talking to my mom. My mom's like, you know what? She's like, I will be willing to come on. Right? Oh, but she's like, she's like, but you have to tell me what to say. I'm like, I can't no. tell you what to say. Nah, it's been natural. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, the thing is, um, in that community, a lot of the times, I think we are getting a lot, a lot better when mm-hmm. it comes to the segment of like, you know, understanding, w- like women can't stand side by side when it comes to a lot of the segments no matter what it is whether it's business whether it's sports whether it's social media or whatever it is like they have equal say in whatever we do and they're not to be someone that just be overlooked and be like no you guys just stay in the background that's what it is Mm -hmm. and and, and the good thing about social media is from your perspective allows you to flourish even more right because um well, the first time I met you was a flash forward, right? Yeah. You were like, uh, you were, you, you worked with, um, well, you still, you still are, right? Yeah. With the Northwest uh, Student Association. Yes, I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so take us behind like your background and what got you into that or like what was your understanding of like <clears throat> of your studies or like how you navigated that? Because it's not easy. Oh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to study 
physics or like you know whatever it is or business yeah. and i'm gonna stick to it because I'm, I'm guessing you had to go through a long journey to get to the point where you are today where mm-hmm. you know what like i enjoy this at this moment and i'm gonna do it to until it fulfills me mm-hmm. until i want to you know strategize and pivot to something else you know so take us through that journey of you kind of deciphering what you really wanted to do and how that journey went about sure it's gonna be a long one so <laughs> yeah, i hope you're ready for, for that yeah. <laughs> Um, well, it, I would say it definitely started when we first came to Canada, my family and I, Mm. um, my parents struggled for a really long time. Um, Mm. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was not easy. It was not fun to watch how it was at home. Um, there were a lot of financial struggles because, you know, we're, we're immigrants, not all the time. It's going to be easy. A lot of the time it's not at all. Mm. Um, and being a child, there were so many uncertainties Mm. just being nine, 10, 11 years old, all the way up until I was 17. Um, it was a little bit hard to, not a little bit, it was really hard to watch my family and how um, they did their absolute best. I love them in pieces, always will. Um, but it's just something different when you're young and there's some mm. things that you have to see at home. Yeah. But I will say that watching, so my dad, he tried a lot of different jobs and he, bless his soul, he studied <laughs> engineering in India. Oh, wow. Such a brilliant man. My mom, she studied interior design and architecture. Wow. They're both well, you know, well-educated people, but they came here and none of those credentials mattered because yeah. we're in Canada. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was a really rough um, realization for them. My dad drove taxis for a little bit. He tried everything under the moon, everything under the sun. Mm -hmm. He turned out to hate working for other people. (laughs) And he turned to business. Mm -hmm. So he, um, when I was quite young, probably 12, 13 years old, he tried to start an advertising business. Mm -hmm. Um, Went well for a few years and then it didn't. Um, and this was while we were still in BC. Oh, yeah. um, and wow, I'm just airing everything. Okay. No, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> um, and then we made a pivot and came to Edmonton, where he worked different jobs again, and it still wasn't easy for them. Um, at this point, I was able to support. I was old enough to work, so I was um, supporting them in different ways. But my dad was like, you know what? It didn't work the first time. I'll try again. I'm going to try again. And my mom supported him so hard, still does. Um, He tried again. He went at it for years. And now my family owns like multiple properties. My dad has a Mm. successful marketing agency in Edmonton and Calgary. And he's, I'm I'm, like, I cannot tell you (laughs) how proud I am of my father and my mother both. Mm. Um, But I would definitely say that watching my family I made some promises to myself. Um, I definitely told myself that I would never, ever struggle with money, ever, in the way that they did. And I learned a lot from my parents, even just being a child. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was one thing. And then the second thing that I learned was just the pure resilience and strength of my father and wanting to take that on. Never, ever stopping. Never, like, stopping Mm -hmm. at nothing. Never giving up. Um, never being afraid to take on new things, no challenges, no nothing, just go straight for it. Um, and yeah, so that childhood, (laughs) so that's just childhood covered. Um, and then from there, actually, I I thought that I would be a lawyer, um, when I was like 17, 18, which nothing wrong with that, but, um, it was more so I realized that I'm just too creative for that. And I'd wanted to be more in the creative scene, the creative industries. Um, but I definitely thought for a long time I was going to be a lawyer, which just did not pan out, which is okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody has aspirations. Yeah. 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 And then in university, I studied psychology. Um, then I went to Nate for design. I studied psychology at McEwen for four years Mm -hmm. so i finished that up um then i took on media studies at nate because i was just bored and interested in different things i wanted to try different (laughs) things (laughs) no that was good but while i was doing that i so i really love art as well so i made a lot of drawings and put my art on t-shirts it's just a little thing i think i was 19 or 20 years old when i did that (laughs) um and i sold it online i put together my own WordPress website and my oh, first wow. WooCommerce, you know, e-commerce thing, my mm. first endeavor. When I was actually, no, that's not my first endeavor. My first, oh my God, I'm getting <laughs> sidetracked. ADHD brain. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'll continue talking about that. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll circle back around. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's all good. Um, 
so where where was I? Uh, the art on the okay, t-shirts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so that did well for a little bit. Um, not like crazy well or anything, but it was good for my age. Mm. Um, and then I like to say that that was the first business that I ever started. But the actual first business that I ever started was when I was nine years old. Oh, wow. Crazy <laughs> enough. <Yeah. laughs> um, and the only reason I say this is because my younger brother, he was born with cleft palate. So he, we were in and out of the Vancouver Children's Hospital very often it was a mm-hmm. weekly occurrence we were in and out in and out um and i noticed that that was that added to my parents troubles and financial troubles struggles because we were in abbotsford yep. and the hospital was an hour and a half away so it was not mm-hmm. easy to make the commute um so i was like you know what i need to do something about this my little nine ten year old self was like, i need to do something <laughs> so i went and got some beads and some crafty scrapbook paper from i think it was michael's or some craft store <laughs> and i just made bracelets and i cut paper and made bookmarks and i like put beaded string through the bookmark to make it all cute you know kind of like this but beads yeah, yeah beads. Oh, okay yeah. yeah i know exactly what you're talking about yeah um so bracelets that's like crazy bookmarks and then i would be in my little elementary school at recess time and i would be sitting at a table at recess outside Hustling and i would have my bracelets and bookmarks laid out and yeah. i'd be like hey you want to buy Five some jewelry dollars, ten dollars. <laughs> i made it yeah. <laughs> yeah and um i would do that all the teachers would buy my stuff all really? like oh. yeah all the students is like um, they would buy it for their moms and mm. like it started to I don't even know it started to grow a little bit I think I made like a hundred bucks or something I was hey, selling back, back, back in the day a lot of money yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you rich yeah and then I just gave it to my parents because I didn't know what else to do with it that's that's the entire reason I wanted to do no, that so that was my real first, first business, business. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah so the t-shirts okay so yeah interesting so yeah. you were always like intrigued. I mean, given your background with your dad, so that always helped, you know, in understanding that like you want to be your own boss, you don't want to work. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that, but mm-hmm. that it's different when you're on your own time schedule, you're understanding like, okay, if I'm working 24 seven, it's for the personal brand that I'm building that mm-hmm. I know that I will yeah. get back. Because a lot of the time, people that have that frustrations in a lot of positions that they're working in is what? I'm busting my ass 24 yeah. seven, and I'm only getting compensated X amount. Mm-hmm. why am i even here and, and no that resentment grows exactly and that yeah. resentment grows yeah. and then, then it, the stagnation comes in then they're like you know what at least it's better than nothing so mm-hmm. it just continues on because then you're like man like i can't quit but yeah. i can't start my own business then like you know own men- your own mental warfare starts to play games with you mm-hmm. so i mean kudos to you you know having that you know i mean mindset that nah i, I, I want more than just like you know just be a nine to five somewhere yeah. eight to mm-hmm. four so yeah. yeah yeah and definitely it started with my family and that drive to provide for them and not just myself yeah okay. no no that's cool so one thing that you know i wanted we wanted to touch up on is like your social presence because you know that's one thing that we're blessed with today's year, like what we're doing right now you know mm-hmm. uh, is we can voice our opinion we can put it online whether people find it intriguing or not you know that's that's their prerogative but at least we have this ability compared to before because before as you said our parents were living off what survival mode, survival mode. yeah they couldn't sit down like this be like oh let's sit on the podcast hell yeah. no they got family to feed yeah. <laughs> you got kids to take care of make sure they're good whatever but we have this you know innate ability to kind of do this type of stuff yeah. Like if we enjoy conversation, we enjoy understanding people's struggles or their life story or their success stories or whatever mm-hmm. it may be and put it out there for the world to kind of, you know, be inspired by, it. you know, whether it's a man or a woman or whoever it may be, mm. they can take aspiration to it. Mm-hmm. And we can provide these stories to the world. Like imagine if somebody that looks up to you, they'd be like, oh, so we should, she got a podcast out. Okay, I'm listening. <laughs> I want to I take notes. What's she going to say? Because, you know, and that's the beauty of it, right? Yeah. So take us through, like, your journey of, like, your social presence, like, on social media mm-hmm. and how that kind of, you know, went viral in a sense and, and the way it took out. Because, like, you know, sometimes it's just, like, the one thing and it could take you literally to the next level. Because I saw some of your work. I think you worked for Vogue. And you currently do or no? Yeah, you, you so do, I don't right? work for them, but what happened is a few years ago, um, my photographer friend, she took some photos of me, mm-hmm. and they ended up in Vogue Italia, the one of them did. Crazy, is that crazy? Yeah, that's crazy. From Edmonton. That's so amazing. That's crazy. Girl from that's Edmonton. Awesome. Like, when she called me to tell me, I sat down on the couch, and I just started crying. <laughs> yeah. I was so grateful. I was like, there's no way. And I think I was only like... 
22 or 3 at the time. Mm-hmm. So it's just, it felt like an overwhelming wave of emotion. I was like, oh, yeah. this is so cool. I've mm-hmm. been involved. What? <laughs> no, that's crazy accomplishment. <laughs> that's you know, sweet. Thinking that you wouldn't even get there. But Thank you. here you are sitting out your couch, but like, I'll be throwing stuff left and right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, you see the shade? Oh, whoa. <laughs> Thank you. That's crazy. So, yeah. you know, more kudos to you, power to you for, Thank you know, you. even uh, putting yourself out there. Thanks. And that was the first time. So that was as a model that I got published on there. Um, And then fast forward to a few years later where I tried my hand in photography and creative direction. Mm -hmm. Another one of my photos ended up um, on Vogue Italia on Photo Vogue. Um, But this time I was a photographer. So I was on the other side, which Mm -hmm. is really, really cool in my (laughs) opinion. So No, that's so dope. And then I saw one of the articles I think I was reading from. I think it was Edmonton Global News. I think you guys had an article. Remember, uh, it was about like the, um, how you guys, it was hard to find photographer that for a certain, I uh, think, our skin tone or the body yeah. types or something like that along yeah. the line. I read mm-hmm. it briefly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was a couple of days ago. And, and, you know, the fact that, you know, you can put yourself out there like that mm-hmm. and be like, yo, guys, this is where we lack diversity mm-hmm. when it comes to this segment. Because yeah. Edmonton is a very diverse city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we still are... There's a lot of improvement and growth to be had, yeah. but we're, we're not shining enough light on that or we're not encouraging those artists that be, might, might be for a minority or a different diversity or whatever. We're not encouraging them enough to be like, okay, put yourself out there or there's work for you, mm-hmm. right? So take us yeah. through that because like that was an interesting piece that I read. I'm like, hmm, this is very interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure, yeah. So this was back in either 2019 or 2020. Um, so the thought behind that was this journalist approached me and she was talking about the photographer list that I was building on my website at the time. So I was in the middle of preparing this uh, list of photographers who were really amazing at capturing different skin tones, accomplished lots of accolades, so many, um, um, they were recognized photographers who didn't just shoot white skin. We're in Alberta, right? So yeah. it's, um, pretty apparent here that there is, um, favoritism among people here Mm -hmm. um so that's something that i noticed within so i was working in the fashion industry for a long time as well um and that's just something that i thought was "Mm, you know this ain't sitting right with me this is not sitting right with me yeah (laughs) yeah but i did know that there were a lot of amazing photographers who could rise up to that challenge they Mm -hmm. were really amazing at capturing different skin tones and body types and that kind of thing and their work was shining so what i wanted to do was put together that list and i made it very uh, public through my instagram that that's something that i was doing and i wanted people to submit photographers names creative directors names if they had any friends family members who really took pride in their diverse range of works yeah um, so i put together a list and put it on my website and then i think a few weeks later i was contacted by a journalist at cbc mm. and she just wanted to cover that um yeah. i wasn't too fond of the way that she um wrote the story wrote the story because it became a little twisted um and it misrepresented what i was trying to do Mm -hmm. but i think that's in the past and it's all right um but when you learn right yeah exactly no no hate no distaste towards anyone ever um but i think what i was really trying to do was highlight the people who are doing it right and not Mm. so much bring down the people who still had a long way to go yeah because that's one of the things i did they were being more like there's more negative energy when I was reading that t- article because I was writing like thoroughly. I'm like, I'm like, int- it's, it's interesting how they went about writing it. Yeah. Because you know, the, there's different ways to write an article, mm-hmm. and the way they went about it. I don't know. I'll show it to you after. Yeah. Way. It's very <laughs> interesting the way they went to you know format it. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, so then I'm like, did she? Is this how she wanted to format? No, it was yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah. No, it was not. I'm glad you brought that up. Actually, um, <laughs> no distaste ever. Um, but yeah, that definitely, I planned it going a little differently in my head. Um, yeah, yeah. But the purpose of that was very different than what happened. And that's actually one of the things that I feel like we we have a, um, a lot of growing to do as a community as well. Because the thing is, like, when it comes to mainstream media, so they'd be intrigued with the story. But the thing is, when it's actually published, you don't know what's half of the story. But like, what is this? I need to talk about this. Like, yeah. What is yeah. this? And that's another thing that I feel like we lack. We need, like, more... Um, especially in Edmonton, I feel like media platforms that are not just filing a certain guideline, 
but like okay we have to follow this guideline or we can't go out of this guideline if we do it's going to affect our viewership mm -hmm. this that we need a more yes. uncensored one and like mm -hmm. one thing that you'll see in the u.s you have a lot of these social media platforms comparative to uh to canada actually mm -hmm. like in, in in u.s like you can freak freely about so many even touchy subjects but yes. in canada you don't see it as much and then another thing that negates that is when you see such uh when you see such laws that are passing by when it comes to censorship of news mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how many times have you have you clicked on canadian news you can't see it on instagram because it says oh it's it's not abiding by the current laws and that's crazy to me we mm -hmm. live in a democratic state country and we're censoring our news platforms because it doesn't align with what? guidelines yeah the agenda of the government <laughs> yeah. yeah right I so i think we need to we need to push forth more and more in regards to that uncensorship especially you know news and the way we articulate it where it's hand in hand you're working with whoever it is you're working with when it comes to uh having that article right now be like hey before you publish it be you know in the sidelines but like okay this is how we're going to publish it what do you think yeah. but there's no in between you could probably speak from like personal experience was there ever a back and forth in between you guys probably not right um, <laughs> <laughs> um so we did have one phone call yeah. last about 10 minutes she asked me maybe two three questions i answered them very quickly because that's the time i was given that's um, crazy 10 minutes and then i never heard back from her again and then really? the article was written See, that's what I mean. That's a, such an interesting way to write a story that you feel like could have a lot of impact on the artists yeah. out there or people that are l listening in. Yeah. And, and two, it's your not even like impacting your image, but at the end of the day, your name yeah. is associated with the yeah. article. They're like, okay, yeah. what's the yeah. first thing you see? Local artist, your name, Subi Sharma, or yeah. whatever it is. Sometimes and then people are going to be like, hmm, interesting. Yeah. So this is how she looks at us or whatever it is, <laughs> yeah. right? So it's going to be easily manipulated and then like what, what the true story is, especially yeah. when you're just only given 10 minutes, like yeah. how much are you really going to be able to say in 10 minutes? <laughs> yeah, minutes? exactly. And yeah. even in during during that duration of the 10 minutes, what I said and what was communicated through the article was very different. So, <laughs> no news, so what y'all be on? <laughs> CBC. CBC. Oh, CBC. Oh, oh that's Mix. crazy. Yeah. And, you know, now we let's look at like the devil advocate of like you know social media. Yeah, because it, it can be the good and evil. Like once the one thing we Absolutely. me and Mok always talk about because sometimes we feel like you know there's so many um, negative things that get um, brought to light more mm -hmm. comparative to the good, and, and mm -hmm. that's what we're seeing more and more now. Because like, what is entertaining now is at the cost of making a mockery or making a fool out of yourself that's what's entertaining mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like genuine conversation that are healthy that needs to be promoted more how to you know uh, handle certain situation in a society those things don't get put in the light at all like me and Mok talk about it all the time I'm like you know we can't stray away from what we're doing on a podcast regardless of what our following is I'm yeah. like our following is going to be slower I'm like it's just a fact of reality mm -hmm. people are not going to sit in and be like man this is boring let's watch something that's funny or something or oh, this guy jumped off a cliff or like this that like yeah, you know crazy. people want to watch something that's that entertains them and which is a lot of the time which is mockery or people making fools out of themselves to promote themselves and yeah. that I'm just like it, it, I don't know it leaves a distasteful you know taste in my in my mouth because i'm like man there's so many people out there that are doing good but they don't get no light on them but when you when you see people that they think foolishness they get all the spotlight mm -hmm. yeah i and, completely and, agree and it impacts the people who are watching it the generation whoever it is the kids they're like oh this is okay to do i'm gonna replicate that mm -hmm. and then you see it more and more and they don't realize what that impact is on the society mm -hmm. yeah. in general right yeah so take us through that because right? like i do want to like you know tap into we'll, 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 we'll segment it out you know <laughs> into different things that he wants to talk about when it comes to social media but yeah, yeah. how did that impact your relationships in general like mm -hmm. whether it's how you viewed social media mm -hmm. how it impacted you personally whether it's your relationship mm -hmm. uh whatever it is how did that impact you yeah absolutely i'm so happy we're talking about this um i'll go through both sides for sure yeah. so i'll start with the good yeah. um mm -hmm. So with the good side of social media, I think it brings people together. I think the accessibility mm -hmm. of information, research, life-changing moments is so much more apparent than it ever could have been yep. um, just 10 years ago, 15 years oh, ago. 100%. So many incredible changes that it's brought about. Mm -hmm. um, last year, so I quit one of my previous jobs in marketing. 
Um, and I wanted to start a business with, well, kind of with my mom, but more so for my mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so she was the face, but I was the brains, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, and so I had planned for some months in advance and I knew exactly what I was going to do, exactly how I was going to market this business. It was jewelry. Um, mm. It was a jewelry website and primarily e-commerce that I wanted to create for her. Um, so I quit my job and I put months and months of work into this business and honestly within two weeks of our launch three weeks of our launch we were completely sold out really? because of content marketing because of TikTok, because of instagram mm. and because of the community that you can build through social media mm. and this isn't just like 10 pieces 15 pieces. this was 200 pieces that we sold out of completely at a hundred dollar price point That's done crazy. gone wow. yeah. in three weeks wow. um and the reason that I was able to do this is because of harnessing the community storytelling that kind of thing i told the story of my immigrant indian mom on tiktok and i talked about how i wanted her to be have a passion and have a hobby and she turned to jewelry design jewelry making making gorgeous bracelets and that kind of thing how mm -hmm. in desi culture jewelry is such a symbolic um representation yep, of who additional. we are gold is so important to us yep. and i told that story through our business through our tiktok through our instagram people resonated so quickly, mm. incredibly quickly. And what it did for my mother, what it did for me, A, was prove, oh, wow, okay, I can do this, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And for my mom, like, wow, business is really viable. My daughter knows what she's doing and marketing is a viable life option yeah. for her. So it worked both ways. Mm. Um, so yeah, so that's the good part, <laughs> um, but the not so good, <laughs> part the cloudy stormy snowy <laughs> blizzard part of social media is the the children looking at it the comparisons mm. the the addiction element like yeah. you will sit on it for six hours at once kids are so addicted to social media what are they seeing on it the censorship as you were uh -huh. saying um how certain things are amplified and other things are pushed down uh -huh. especially in what's going on right now oh my yeah, god I know. um and another thing is that with what's important for us to see what we need to see what we should be seeing we don't see any of that at all nope. yep. because of how facebook is engineered because of how instagram is engineered all of these platforms their alg algorithms are purely designed to incite engagement Engage where does engagement come from mm -hmm. it comes from the the hate the spite nope. the, drama. the the drama <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly and you see that over and over and over again hmm. you, your brain is desensitized to everything that matters i know it's terrible um so that's just one part of it and then the young girls comparing themselves to the kardashians of the world and comparing themselves to women online promoting their own agendas and to mm. shitty influencers who are doing a horrible job selling tummy <laughs> teas and just pills that make you shit your pants it's just it's crazy <laughs> it is, actually crazy. It is it it's is, insane yeah. it's and actually i hate insane. it i hate it yeah. so bad um and that's the that's the entire reason that i don't want to be an influencer forever this mm. is like a five-year stunt that I'm yeah. doing no, and um, it's all for a reason it's all connected to business my brand PR publicity that kind of thing mm -hmm. it's not connected to me trying to make people buy things trying to make people um, do whatever my own personal agenda is it's just tied to having fun yeah. um, because when you see I, I know influencers who are straight up lying about their age saying they're <laughs> 45 years old when they're actually 27 to Jesus sell skincare Christ. products that is crazy. so that they can say oh look my skin looks so young <laughs> my skin is so young i'm 42 years old but i look 25 and they're actually just 27 years that old but they're selling you Thanks. skincare through their affiliate links and it's just trust me crazy no that's crazy yeah that's insane man. yeah like, <laughs> it's so dark and it's that's so, the thing so is dark. like even when we were making content for the podcast of course ours is a little bit more realistic <laughs> in that sense but <laughs> mm -hmm. even like just trying to look at the analytics when i look at the analytics for youtube Mm -hmm. right you talk about something serious you only have 15 views yeah and i'm like okay let me test this out because i'm like okay people have a very short attention span yeah and then i'm like okay let me change it to 20 seconds but let me just pick something that's very 
controversial whatever we, we talk about and exactly. that's when you get like 500 600 700 views i'm like this is crazy even though we're controversial we got like like five six thousand it was like yeah it was like eight thousand views i'm like come on man and then we got like 50 subscribers from that i'm like okay well <laughs> i also want to that's a blessing right, too. it's so multifaceted how are you supposed to think in that way when numbers are associated with our identity who we are what we what we need to show the world yeah. but at the same time it's like are we communicating what we want to communicate well that's the thing too is like just people don't really want to see they don't want to see the long story of it like the back end of it they mm -hmm. just want to get to the point and it's just like how do you make ten thousand twenty thousand dollars a month it's just mm -hmm. nobody would want to work, work the process of it yeah right? so and i think one thing you kind of important uh you touched upon is um how girls or women uh, whoever it is at a young age older age how they kind of um view social media and how it impacts them personally what i mean yeah. by that is like I see a lot of like girls or women like they try to emulate the lives of these let's say like there's like you know seven eight nine billion people in this world mm -hmm. right and let's say as you said the world in this world the, the kim kardashians or you know you know the other people that are mainstream medias they put in such a big spotlight like this is who you ought to be and, and, and you know the scary part about that is like i'm a at a young age girls are like like the 13, 14, like makeup. And I see people with Botox at that age. And I'm like, yo, Crazy. what is going on? Mm -hmm. But that's the standard of beauty that we think that's what beauty is. Mm -hmm. And, and and you know, how that impacts, like, unless related back to our community. Brown communities, girls, what is it? You can't do this. You can't do that. Oh, God. Right? Yeah. There's just so many things that um, when it comes to women, we... <clears throat> They can't do but when it comes to men like no problem do whatever right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but when you see that uh on social media so much because it's so accessible as you said and you know these things are amplified and they be like wait why are you telling me you can't look everybody else is doing why can't we so now the resentment grows so yeah. now you have the resentment in, in your heart and now you're guided by the wrong things in life when it comes to social media because that's what is in style as you can say yeah at, in right now everything TikTok. You want to learn something? Put it on YouTube. You want to search something? TikTok. Uh, you want to post something? Go on Instagram. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. Ain't no one pulling up a map like where do we gotta go? Yeah. No. Yeah. Ain't no one going to local. Oh, yeah. No one's hopping local to local <laughs> restaurant. Be like, well, let me try this. Everybody go on Google yeah. this. That go on TikTok. Mm, interesting. You can literally see everything on social media. Mm -hmm. And you know, relating back it to our community. You know, um, speaking from your perspective, like growing up, you know, being a brown girl. Uh, do you feel like a lot of girls are reaching out to you given the work you're doing but like hey like this is inspiring this is something i want to do mm -hmm. and how do you kind of you know i don't know if you have or not given advice to you know these younger people or even older whoever it may be mm -hmm. uh, how do you decipher that understanding be like listen this is not something that is a set standard this is just something that works for me mm -hmm. given my personal brand yeah. everybody's different that doesn't even just because come kim kardashian has like you know like these certain attributes as a woman like oh like like you know whatever it may be yeah but like oh you need a bigger like ass or boobs or whatever it is yeah. that's not the set the beauty standards the beauty within is what you present to the world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not what you can portray to the world absolutely mm -hmm. right yeah. so take us through that because that's the one thing that we want to take it from a girl perspective because we never had it a girl on so mm -hmm. yeah for sure <laughs> I get so many questions about this kind of thing <laughs> every day, um, so many DMs. Um, I used to be more responsive because I had the time. Yeah. Um, these days, unfortunately, I just haven't been able to make the time, but I do remember what I would say to young girls, to elder women even, who wanted yeah. to make a living through social media, whatever it is that they wanted to do. Um, I would just often tell them, first of all, it's not all butterflies and rainbows <laughs> and sunshine. Yeah. And of course, everyone's different. Everyone's attributes are different. Everyone looks different. Everyone is a different, unique human mm -hmm. being. And you need to use that as your advantage. And I'm not talking about looks. I'm talking yeah. about what they can provide exactly. online, the value they can provide online. Because there are billions of beautiful women mm -hmm. online who have 10 followers, 100 followers, yep. 20 yep. followers, whatever it is, not a large following on Instagram, TikTok, whatever. And they're posting themselves. They're beautiful. Yep. They're kind. They're whatever it is that they are, but they don't know how to edit a video. <laughs> they yeah. don't know how to add value to the conversation. They don't know how to craft a good, compelling caption. They don't know how to. There's a lot of things that go into marketing, content marketing strategy that you just don't think about until mm -hmm. you actually hit that point where it's like, oh, wow. This worked so well, but when I did it this way, it didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and so many beautiful women, but 
if it was just beauty that could make you go viral, then every beautiful woman on earth would be making hundreds of thousands of dollars every mm -hmm. year, right? So yeah. it's not just that, it's understanding your demographic, it's understanding how to reach them in the right spot at the right time. Um, also, TikTok brain rot is crazy. Like, <laughs> our attention spans have gone down like. Crazy, I think crazy, now yeah. what the most recent figure that I was reading was we you have 0 0.7 seconds to capture a viewer's attention so true. on TikTok, wow. Instagram, YouTube. <laughs> 0.7 so seconds. Um, We've seen it on our reels. It's insane. Yeah. It's like 10 it's seconds insane. after it just dies down. Yeah. <laughs> just, oh, 10 <laughs> seconds is the cap, dude. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. dead. <laughs> People are gone by then. It's, yeah. it's insane. Like if you don't get them with something in the first 0 0.7 seconds, you're done. You're done. And yeah. that's terrifying, but mm. it's also very challenging in a good way at the mm -hmm. same time if you are serious about what you want to do and what how you want to market yourself online. So that's something that I tell um, or used to tell every woman that would approach me and ask me for advice i would always tell them you know what there's so many things that you could do online um, but it can't just be about your face it can't be about your body like it can't just be about the superficial elements of who you are it has to be more than that otherwise mm -hmm. no one's gonna someone will see your face someone will say oh she's pretty and then scroll you're not yeah. going to gain a follower. You're not going to gain anything mm. from that if you're not talking about something important or if you don't understand how to edit a video or know what people are going to listen to. Mm. So there has to be, It's you have to be well-rounded. You can't just be beautiful online. Yeah, I think it should also be a lesson to those who, I mean, let's just say if you are using your beauty, your looks and all that sort, right? You got to really be mindful of what content you're providing to this world. Yeah. I mean, you just never know like, you know, a young 10 year old, like how she sees it. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And it's just, they need to be, have this awareness of like, okay, you're at this stage where in life, where you have this X amount of followers, whatever it may be, you're also going to be a role model to these kids. Yeah. Right. And yeah. how it's going to influence them and their perspective of life as well. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I don't know, like what I wanted to ask <laughs> you in that sense is that because, you know, you're quite successful in your own field too, right? Like, how do you want to, what, what message would you want to really give to those younger generation? Like, okay, this is what you should look for on social media. Because mm -hmm. I think, I think what, what me and like I, myself as well, whether this is actually not even saying brown, or, uh, whether it's girl or guys, me and Mook struggle with the understanding of like men and women out today, the way they attract attention is sexualizing self to the world. Because yep. sex sells. Yeah. The, the bottom line is that's what it is. And what I see a lot of right now is whether it's man or women, because I don't like putting anybody in a bubble, but like, no, only women are doing this. Like, yeah. And one thing I, I, I always have discussion with, like, you know, Moke as well. I'm like, man, like, you know, it's just like people are quick to judge, like, either, oh, like, she's a hoe. I'm like, but like, dudes just right. And like, it, it ain't about presenting them. I'm like, okay, you got to look at, like, what's going on, right? Mm. We are allowing this content to kind of take off because we're sexualizing everything. We live mm. in a very toxic world now. Yeah. We do. Like, we want to see this as much as we don't want to see this like people are no i don't want to see this but they're the one who freaking clicking on the videos oh, and, yeah, seeing yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah. they're the one who spewing hate but guess what they'll yeah. be on the next post yeah, yeah why oh, the yeah. hell you did if you hate it so much how yeah. are you still back here right yeah mm -hmm. and and that's the one thing that me and Mook struggle i'm like man the sexualization of ourselves is becoming so and so more prominent mm -hmm. and people are falling victim to it because it's easy it's easy mm. to get uh, attention like this. Yeah. If you if you want some sort of gig, it's easy to sell you. No, no, I won't say sell, but exploit your body in a sense where it it's kind of um, exploiting yourself. Mm -hmm. Be like, okay, if I want a gig as a man, be like, okay, hmm, I want to get a gig in some sort of industry, but only way I think I could get attention is if I sexualize myself or whether it's a woman. Same thing. Mm. And we're seeing that more and more, a lot more, and then that leads to a lot of people that. As you said, they're not built for what the backlash they will get. And that mm. breaks them down because now you're getting criticized on everything because you put oh, yourself yeah. out there. Whether it's yeah. the, the way you look, the way you present yourself, like, oh, you're a clown, this, that. Because, you know, one thing I want to talk about is up on a hockey. I don't know if you guys, that, that one interview they did in Vancouver for uh, um, with the Toronto <clears throat> Maple Leafs game. It was a Linus Carr girl. Okay. With, um, I forgot the interview, but the interview, the way she spoke is it, different. Um, I, I don't know. The way she just speaks is different. Mm -hmm. I went to the comments. Man, they were mean. They didn't, oh, yeah. even, they didn't even understand what the concept of what they were saying. Nobody yeah. focused on that. Everybody's like, oh, you sound like you have Down syndrome, this, that. And I'm like, 
these are our people. <laughs> this is how you guys promote. That's how this is. This is it's supposed crazy, to man. be healthy content. Yeah, they're promoting good content. They're yeah. they're raising awareness <laughs> for kids that want to get involved in hockey especially as girls yeah and you guys are spewing all this bullshit under it and then you guys are promoting like other shit that you guys call quote unquote that oh guys or girls are acting like hoes but you guys promote this shit you guys go on they be like oh very nice this that creepy shit mm-hmm. you know what i mean so yeah. it's like i don't know it's a it's a scary world because when, when you do get looked through that scope everything like you know it, it's scary it's scary it's terrifying you know and that's yeah. the one thing we, me and Mo talk about all the time is like man it's like you don't even know what, what to believe anymore yeah well, who's a good person bad person yeah how do you even view a person because now we look at because we're deciphering their life too given this so, social media presence yeah mm-hmm. the way you present yourself yeah how do you present yourself because everybody knows what you're putting on is going to be perceived a certain way depending on the individual that's viewing it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. how do you decipher that like okay this content i'm going to promote it and such but it's protecting my individual brand and what my brand is behind it but it's also preserving my relationship that i have I, I, and i believe you're uh, you're taking as well uh, you're, you're dating right yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so preserving your relationship with your boyfriend respecting him as well mm-hmm. and vice versa him being secure about himself be like hey this is your brand i understand it that's fine yeah. because a lot of people don't understand is the other side of it is a lot of people want to shun be like the girl be like no you have to respect it but then there's no other other side where like the guy has to be understanding this is their business mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we live in a new world we don't live in a world where like okay you just stay at home cook and all that mm-hmm. we don't live in that environment mm-hmm. and especially in brown communities that's what's promoted yeah if, if girls do want to do that that's go for it mm-hmm. there ain't nothing wrong with it but how do you balance that oh my god because <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you guys have these talks no <laughs> and gosh, no, yeah so mm. um first i'll start off by saying that when I started to post more content regularly and it became more consistent with it and started to notice these hate comments (laughs) flowing in, it really, there's no better word for it than just it made me so sad because Mm. I thought I was doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. I thought I was doing it completely fine. I was being confident in who I was. I was participating in fun trends. I wasn't doing anything overly. I I think I was doing it right. Mm-hmm. Um, but no matter, especially as women, no matter what you're doing, no matter how you're talking, no matter what you're wearing, no matter whatever it is you think you're doing correctly, someone will, and this might not even be a woman thing, someone will think you are doing it the wrong way. Mm-hmm. There's going to be someone out there who thinks you're stupid, you're fat, you're ugly, you're annoying. There's going to be so many people. No, Everyone's not going to like you. And that was a very tough lesson <laughs> for me to learn in my beginning phases of when I first started because mm. that had me breaking down once a week with the comments that I was getting. Even when um, I would post a gush, he's, he's bald. Um, so when I would post him, people would go and like be like is this your dad is this like and i would get so sad he didn't Mm. give a shit he's very (laughs) very secure in who he is he's he's such a strong incredible man i love him to pieces but i would be there like what's wrong with this person why would they say that like like, yeah so at the same time you can't really say that someone is 100 percent bad 100 mm, exactly. good no one is 100 percent good. good yeah no one's 100 percent bad we're multifaceted <clears throat> and complex creatures human brains are so we don't even know 90 percent of our brain we, we don't, don't know what's in it we don't know how it works hmm. um so once i understood that it wasn't per- personal and I started growing more and more and more and more. Once I started getting a thousand followers a day, three thousand followers a day, it started to pile up. I was like, you know what? So many comments. I don't give a fuck anymore. Like, <laughs> I'm making money. Like, it, do- it doesn't matter. I'm doing what I love, and I'm sending a good message from what I think. And none of this matters to me anymore. Mm. Of course, I will still see the occasional comment that will make me want to ram myself into a wall, mm-hmm. but. I keep my composure and I think that it's so harmful to engage in that kind of discourse. I still do it sometimes. I'm still, <laughs> still learning. <laughs> yeah. But that's only when I'm really like, what is wrong with you? You know, when it's a yeah. really serious thing, but I'm trying my best. I'm not a human being. <laughs> I'm doing my best. I'm trying not to be that way, but sometimes it happens. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no. <clears throat> and then yeah, the other aspect I want to, you know, I also want to mention is like the relationship part too, right? It's just, I mean, adding on, adding on to it, it's just nowadays it's, um, you know, I've, I've found that, I mean, we've seen is just like how 
divorce rates have increased so much just because of the influence of social media, right? It's just this perspective of like, oh, this is the, the X type of man that, you know, kind of really jumping to conclusions like, okay, this man is really successful, but not really truly understand like if you're in a relationship, with, you know, if a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it may be, like truly understand like who is your partner, mm-hmm. right? And it's just having that patience of being able to build mm-hmm. and understanding it's a long process. Whereas a lot of people, it's just like they just jump to the conclusions like, oh, this is the type of man I want. This is the type of woman I want. Yeah. But if you're able to build to that point, then that's a lot more, you know, it's a lot more of a, in a sense, like respectful. It's an understanding of like, you know, that you've worked through the difficult, most difficult parts in life Mm -hmm. and be able to build something of of this nature, right? Yeah. But it's like now it's like, okay, well, you see a picture of, you know, a woman that's quite successful. A man that's really successful. They're flashing money and stuff like that. And they get influenced. It's like, okay, I'm with this partner. Mm. Really not really at that point yet. (laughs) And it's just like, okay, well, you know, and... What are we working towards? Yeah, what are we working towards? There's no patience left at this point, right? Oh, yeah. And that's why, yeah. you know, I try to teach, like, you know, we always bring his name up, a beer. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I teach, you know, I try to teach him to the most that I've learned, you know, and I tell him, it's like, hey, this is what you got to look out for. Don't be influenced by social media. Mm-hmm. Social media is just whatever. But really look at the person <laughs> that you're standing beside, right? It's just yeah. understand that if she has an understanding of, like, what you're working <clears throat> towards and your ambitions, mm-hmm. that will that will be everything. Right. Yeah. But so. also, she should have her own. Oh yeah, she <laughs> should like, definitely. She should yeah. absolutely have her own. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hate the culture of like. Well, I don't hate it, but I think that it can be harmful to young girls when they see um, elder woman or mid mid age woman um, depending on a man for literally everything. Which is, you know, what it's completely fine if the woman's okay with it, the man's okay with it. That's okay. But sometimes what ends up happening, especially in our community, is young desi girls will see that. They'll see that in their mothers, their aunties, their grandmothers. They'll see that they depend entirely on the man for finances, mm. whatever it is. And that man will hit them around, throw them against walls. Mm. The domestic violence is, I know you know it's bad within it our is. community. community yeah. really bad. Um, and young girls will think that, okay, this is what I have to tolerate. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to, if in the event that I don't want to work, I don't want to go to school, I don't want to be my own person, I can just hitch a man and I can, <clears> he can <throat> do whatever he wants to me and I depend on him for finances. It's an equal trade off. Mm-hmm. That's no. the shit I don't like. Yeah. So yeah. I always try to, and I have younger cousins, 16 year old little girls, and I have two little brothers. One is 15, 16, and the 15. other is. <laughs> <He's only 50. laughs> yeah. And the other is 13. So there's yeah. so many things that I have to help teach them alongside my parents as well because I've learned so many lessons at my age. Mm-hmm. But I think one thing that is so harmful for young Desi girls is that. A, the comparison aspect of social media, but also even just seeing what they see in our community and thinking that it's it's okay and we don't have to be our own person. We mm. Our entire purpose is to get married, pop out some kids, take whatever it is, and <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. was a light way to put it, no, but no, it's yeah. a heavy topic, so. <laughs> no, we're gonna, we'll talk about it a little bit more because I yeah. think it's important uh, in our culture. And the thing is, like, for me, I, I, I'm gonna stand affirmative on this. Dating at a young age, um, I personally don't think it's the way to go. reason why I say that is because, let's say you are 17, 18, and you get into a relationship at that age. I'm not saying they don't work out. Sometimes they do work out. But the reason why they don't work out, emotionally, mentally, you're not there yet as a person that you built yourself up to it. Mm-hmm. Now, you're, you're, you're molding your own life into existence, and you're understanding yourself more emotionally and mentally. Now, you're constrained to another person's emotions. Mm. that you have to worry about at that young of age and put yourself in a position. And we're normalizing this dating at a young age so much is to a point where, like, I hear stories where, like, this girl's like, I, I've been in a toxic relationship at 16. I'm 16. I didn't even talk to a girl when I'm 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let alone be in a dating t- at 16, right? Yeah. So it, it's crazy to me the fact that now it's so normalized to a point where, like, yeah, 16, 17, 18 is normal to date. I'm like, since when? Mm-hmm. Now, I personally, I don't recommend it because mm-hmm. those are the stages where you truly get to understand who you are as a person, what you want from your life, which direction you want it to be. Because if you don't understand yourself at the time, when you are emotionally constrained, to another person depending on your action what you do whether even if okay since we are on social media because that's what you know 
let's take your social media at a young age. Mm -hmm. What's the one to oh, toxic personality God. when it comes to brown people, right? Mm -hmm. Be like, oh, why are you following this person? Why are you following that person? Why are you liking this person? Yeah. At that young of an age, you're becoming, and now, yeah. as you said, it becomes abusive. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what that does to a person, either you you stray away or you respond to that, you respond to that abuse with what? Abuse back. Mm -hmm. And that happens more often than people leaving. Mm -hmm. And now, that impacts you negatively so much now you're at 23 24 hopefully you know you get out of a toxic relationship now your whole mindset is in a different stratosphere to going to another relationship mm -hmm. now you have to rebuild yourself personally before you get into others but no what do we promote no it's okay just jump in another relationship you'll be good yeah, yeah. and then what does that do because whether it's a girl or a guy you suck the good out of someone when you think oh i'll work through it but like i want to I want to I want to be in a relationship mm. Mm. unless you're genuinely good you're working on it, you're improving and you're not pushing your you know negative you know toxicity into the world or your relationship or your work or whatever it is mm. but I still don't recommend it at yeah. that young of age it is too young of an age to date I, I personally think and people mm. they should normalize it and I even tell her I'm like nah man I'm like don't date at this age you're too young Mm -hmm. Is that a family member? No, he just uh, he just one of the. Uh, well, he he's like a little brother. I mean, he's not family, but he's like a little brother, mm -hmm. and he just looks up to us. Whenever Aww. he's going through something, he always questions us. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're, we're family. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. family. Like, yo, if you have going through anything, relationships, family, whatever it is, mm -hmm. just just give us a call. Like, yeah. it's like I don't want because like for us, it's like yo, we didn't really have anybody to really talk to when we were growing up, right? Yeah. We wish that we had that older brother. Uh, sense Same. like that could have the older sister <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> so you know we took all the hits and stuff like that right so and you know what like i told him i was like i didn't start dating till i was 26 mm. right and mm. for me for my aspect my my story my end of it my end of the story is just like you know when when i was going through high school and stuff like that you know of course like we have that trauma from brown families living in a brown family so and then i was like okay well i see all these young kids you know dating and stuff but then it's just so toxic you just hear about it. it's just like i'm like interesting I'm like mm -hmm. now i'm 26 i've res <laughs> basically resolved all the emotional damage that i had growing up with mm -hmm. the family situation it was in mm -hmm. now if i was to find someone i'll be good like yeah. i don't have to deal with that toxic uh, mm -hmm. you know you know um type of environment and all that sorry like i know what i'm looking for yeah. mm -hmm. I, I understand that if i want to have need to have a conversation with my person um about something that might be an issue right it's easy to have that conversation right mm -hmm. it's not like really toxic in that yeah. sense mm -hmm. so it's just in in you know kind of going back to like if these kids are dating at a young age i just, you know i completely really agree with Amir. it's just you shouldn't be dating at this point because it's just like they're so many unresolved issues that you have faced at, within a brown family in a south asian family oh, yeah. that get transferred over to a relationship right yeah, so absolutely how do you yeah. feel about that yeah oh my god i absolutely agree and yeah. being someone who oh my god i so i was in a relationship when i was 19 years old mm. um and fresh in university you know i was doing so well um i i love school i've always loved the um, academic sense of thing. I've always yeah. loved the atmosphere. I've always been someone who gets through like three novels a week. Like I love reading. I'm, I've always been that person. Mm -hmm. um, I get into this relationship and things are just flowers, sunshine, rainbows, puppies at For first. For a couple months, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he starts to really show his true colors and it was so bad. It was so bad for my mental health. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I'm at that time, um, I was very sensitive and very, um, so young. Mm -hmm. So sensitive, so like easy to cry, easy to like. There's a lot of the women out there though, at yeah, your age, at that age. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I didn't have an identity. I didn't know what I was doing. Exactly. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I didn't, there was no reason for me to be in that relationship. But I was so enamored, so charmed. And mm. my parents were strict. Mm. on me growing oh, up so you're the rebellious yeah. like, no, no, I'm they can't tell me someone. <laughs> oh god I should listen to them anyways I feel like we all grow up and yeah. think that sometimes mm -hmm. with our parents no but we do yeah so I was in this relationship and naturally it did not turn out well he was cheating on me with like five other people Jesus mm -hmm. Christ no mind yeah mind. no it was crazy <laughs> so, yeah. crazy and that really destroys your perception it of does. who you are it really destroys like was I not enough you know and it yeah. makes me scared cry just thinking about it like because mm. i i was doing everything that i could i mm. like to think that i was such a kind person at that age even um 
I'm a very giving person, just like my father. He, my mom was telling me about how one time when we were first in this country, um, he gave his last five dollars to a homeless man on the street mm-hmm. while we were walking home from wow. the superstore. And my mom, she was so annoyed. She was like, "Why would you do that? We need that. We have, yeah, yeah. we have a child. Like, we need that." And my dad was like, "Something was telling me I needed to you do, do it." it yeah. mm. um, and growing up, I just always felt that same way. I've always been. Um, that kind of person as well very kind that, very generous yeah. um so i brought that to that relationship but unfortunately i was a pushover i was just and i wasn't developed i was 19 exactly. mm-hmm. i was in There's the nothing. middle of school yeah. it just it i shouldn't have been in that relationship in the first place i should have gone and touched grass and like <laughs> gone on trips and experiences exactly. explore the world mm-hmm. i should have yeah. I stopped reading those like nine months. I stopped reading. I stopped painting, doing everything that I loved because I was so obsessed with texting this guy and like calling him and hanging out with him. He was so bad for me, mm. right? So I feel like dating at a young, but it's so <clears throat> complex because it is. It's a complex. It's not just like oh, don't do it completely. Yeah, everybody's different perspective. But you know, this is more uh, like personally. Yeah, as you said, I think there's more cons to it. But there are people that that have good to present to each other mm. they come mm-hmm. together they blossom into this beautiful relationship yeah and i have seen this yeah it's a rare so, occasion though me too sure, it's though. so rare my yeah. god <laughs> and even if it does happen there's almost always problems no one will ever tell you about like if exactly. you've been dating since you were 17 yeah and now you're getting married or whatever <clears throat> it is a lot of the time those relationships have some problems that they won't Mm. ever share um and that's because they've been dating the same person their entire life they've never had um not saying that you should go sleep around (laughs) not saying that at all (laughs) but they've never like found themselves they've never found out what they liked (laughs) they've never i'm not saying that no no i get you (laughs) okay okay okay. (laughs) um but they just don't know who they are they don't know who they like they don't know any of that um and the foundation of a good relationship is security in yourself, mm. security in who you are, your identity, your finances, all of these things I think that should be well thought of before you even think of entering a relationship with anyone. Mm-hmm. No, that's, that's well said. Um, I agree on all aspects that you said. And then, you know, going, I think more going deep into the relationship segment is I think one thing that we have is such a negative, um, I guess you can say call more rebellious generation now. Reason why is because from what we see with our parents. Mm. The thing is, man, like a lot of people do grow up in a toxic environment. A lot of them. And a lot of the times, you know, predominantly it's what? It's the way the traditional man views um, a household. How is it presented? Like personally from my, you know, my end, I, I see the impact it has taken on my mom. Um, you know, she uh, she went through depression. She goes in and out. She goes through like the in and out like phases now where like she'll have this like manic episode where like, she has so much high energy for mm. two, three months. She'll like have crazy energy. And then after that, she'll just shut down. She doesn't want to do anything, mm. doesn't want to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. For me, at a young age, I never understood what that was. Mm. For me, I thought it was normal. I'm like, whatever. Mm-hmm. But now I'm growing more and more. I'm like, yo, like there's more to this. Then I started going to a doctor's appointment. I'm like, yo, she, this is not normal. Mm. Like before, it'd be like, okay, take a couple of pills. Don't worry, you're good. That's mm. all there was. Mm-hmm. Mm. Therapy is not even seen as a viable option. Oh I think God. a lot of people, like in our family, Don't get me started. yeah, like therapy, <laughs> like I, like when it comes to family structure, like back home, we need to have more people that speak Punjabi and do therapy. We need mm. more of it. Even, oh, si- yeah, yeah. Yes. even, even like yeah. psychiatrists. I booked one for my mom. It just said four to five months. I'm like, okay, do this speak at least different language, like Punjabi or Hindi or something. They're yeah, like, no. Yeah. I'm like, how the hell is she going to understand anything? She yeah. don't understand no English. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm like, okay, mom, then I have to go with it. We don't have enough people that speak up there, like Punjabi mm. or whatever it is, Hindi mm. or whatever it is, to have that support mm. level for our parents. And that's the one thing that... That's a good point. Yeah, because mm-hmm. the thing is, like, it, it's so important because imagine if you do... It's not the same connection. You, I'm speaking to you one-on-one. I'm speaking to Mook one-on-one. If, especially in those sessions, that will have a more impact. Whether, yo, Mo, can you tell her this? Yo, Mo, can you tell her this? And yeah. then you do, hey, can you tell Mo to tell me yeah. this? Yeah. There is yeah. no in that personal connection you build with that person when it comes to therapy. It's mm-hmm. like a, it's like trying out. It's like a tryout. Yeah. The first person is not going to be that a person. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. like they have a different experience. The way they view it is different. So you have to kind of go around to mm-hmm. see who seek, fits you best. Yeah. And our parents don't have that. How many people you can you can see but like there's therapists that speak in Punjabi or Hindi be like yeah I can go to one of my speakers no there, there isn't none when there is no outlet like that and I spoke to the doctor about it I'm like man we need more people that are out there that do this so I'm like and that's kind of relates back to 
our culture, which we will kind of touch upon, is we're straying away from understanding the problematic issues that we have that we neglect. And then we don't want to take those responsibilities head on because it's whatever. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. You're mm-hmm. the person that is molded by your relationship from your family. Hate comes from a place of how you're raised or whether it's some sort of ego rhetoric or ego whatever mm-hmm. it is that you that your perception of life is based off your experiences it's Absolutely. never just comes out of nowhere it just come out things uh you know thin air it comes from your your um your family dynamic and you know speaking on that is like we spoke about it before it's such a toxic environment sometimes when it comes from like from you know a lot of the pre- people i have talked to is what a lot of the times your moms you know they work clean cook do all this and then while well, your dad comes from a long shift around seven six they take a couple bags they go to sleep mm-hmm. that's that, that's what a dynamic of quote unquote is this is how it should be mm-hmm. and now you're seeing this to yourself as a woman and, and as a man be like what the hell <laughs> yeah. what is this yeah you don't have no connection you can't talk to your dad about be like dad i'm experiencing some issue who are you supposed to talk to yeah, yeah. so now we as brown communities mm-hmm. we're deciphering our life and how to decipher through relationships mm-hmm having this burden not burden but this pressure of like i gotta be uh financially or like not financially i would say like study wise i gotta be good i gotta I, this is the standard that's been set i gotta achieve that while understanding who i am as a person while also understanding my struggles mm. and i don't have anybody to talk yeah. to yeah and on top of that deal with relationships yeah. and now you're coming out of university but like damn i never talked to a girl <laughs> i don't know how to talk to a girl <laughs> <laughs> so now you're 23, 24. Oh you're like, what do I do? Do yeah. I go out? Do I say something? Yeah. Now you don't have, because now you can't sit down with your child and be like, Dad, my yeah. key, come on. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the pressure of success. Yeah. 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 I'm like, no, my name, but that's what I'm asking. No. <laughs> you can't have that conversation, right? Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> oh, my goodness. When it comes to like like relationships like that, it's uh, in, in our communities, uh, it's hard, man. Uh, we need to have more and more representation when it comes to, as I said, in therapy, in our in our language, mm-hmm. um, psychiatrists or whatever it is, we yeah. need to have more of it. Yeah. And, and I think parents, a lot of our parents do need to go to it mm-hmm. because they have so much. All of our parents. All, Almost I'm all serious. of our parents. All parents. I'm serious. Yeah. All, That's all, true. They have That's true. so much on their shoulders. They don't have, they don't yeah. know how to let it off. And how yeah. do they let it off? In a negative way. Yeah. Either Drinking. alcohol, yeah. drugs. Yeah. Uh, being toxic in their household, mm-hmm. how you view your counter partner. Mm-hmm. I don't know the last time. I don't think any time. I don't know my dad bought my mom anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. ever. <clears throat> yeah. And now you look at your relationship and be like, man, if I don't buy my girl like something, be like, I wouldn't want that. I wish mm-hmm. you buy me something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now you don't grow up in the environment of like this, you know, the, the gift giving or whatever it is. These small things. Yeah. That resonates to how you view a person. That love that you have for that. Mm-hmm. You don't see that often. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh my goodness, so many good points there. Especially your point about how there are no um, multilingual therapists. There's so, well, there I'm sure there are there some, are. but mm. Punjabi, Hindi speaking ones, oof, not Rare, a. Yeah. It's such a good point. I didn't even think about it that yeah. way. But you know what? There is hope because there it's is. changing. So mm. many people our age are becoming those therapists. They're becoming psychiatrists. They're going into medicine. They're understanding how to. Um, treat and help and all of these things yep. yeah. but then the additional problem <laughs> on top of that is yeah. their Punjabi is broken exactly it's true. Hindi is broken, broken. True, yep. true. because they're exposed to so much English mm-hmm. and that's fine that's great it's good to be multilingual but then they're losing <clears throat> a part of their own culture, culture. identity culture, yeah. their language it's falling behind it is. so that and that communication what parent think about our parents okay yeah. <laughs> who's going to want to go to a 28 year old therapist and talk in broken Punjabi yeah, with them. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's true. That's true. Yeah, and honestly, even before that problem is the problem of parents understanding that they need it in the first, first place. place. Yeah. So them, us trying to convince them, like, you know, therapy might be good for you. And then being like, what is that? That is a waste of yeah. money and time. That is, yeah. why would we do that? We're completely healthy. We're completely no. normal. <laughs> Anything <Yeah>. but healthy. <laughs> Mental health does not, Exist. it's not a thing. What is that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Anxiety, depression, those are made up by doctors and nurses to get our money from us. I yeah. Don't know. <laughs> Yeah, those things, they do exist. Because, you know, one of the stories that really touched me was when one person told me, like, her mom was going through depression. She was going through, like, a lot of the struggles because, like, she had a different, um, like, she had a lot of burden on her. And uh, and her father was, like, a little bit more abusive side, like, verbally. Mm. And, like, he was drinking a lot. So 
and it would just take it on her. But thing, and then you know, the, and then there came a point where like she got diagnosed with I, th- I, I don't know what it was, clinical depression. I don't know what it was. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. and he's like, yo, my dad's like, yo, koi na vas koi ni di goli leja. She she'd be like, it's easier for you to sleep at night. And I'm like, that's nah. what he said. Like imagine if you hearing that as a kid Aww. about someone that you saying like that's your mother mm-hmm. mm. or even like father like even role reverse that's how they say it. yeah how are you supposed to take that in man yeah 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 right like it's crazy to me like we need to do better in our community yeah support each other more understand each other more and have these talks more because the more we have these mm-hmm. talks the more we become informative and you know the last podcast we did we did it in Punjabi the reason why oh, we did it in Punjabi yeah, 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 because yeah. I think it's important to do it in Punjabi because it's preserving our culture as you mm-hmm. said mm-hmm. right if we forget how to speak our language in a public setting where we presenting ourselves to convey our message be like why is this important mm-hmm. and if we stray away from that nobody will ever even touch it again mm-hmm. yeah right yeah and it's such a beautiful language too when it comes to Hindi and it's such a beautiful language yeah. Yeah. and when it comes to India it's such a diverse there's Gujarati there's Marathi there's mm-hmm. there's, there's so many languages mm-hmm. right and True. if you don't preserve that culture what is left behind mm. right yeah and we and we constantly fight this battle a lot of the time you know where we're like we want to fit in rather than we want to just carry I don't, I don't know what how, how do you feel about that though like this whole culture like do you think it's more so because they want to fit in or they're just embarrassed to talk about it like in, in regular household why do you think that it was like it was a normalized mm-hmm. english all the time so they just normal for them to talk in english mm-hmm. what, what, why do you think because i never understood it why do you think that is so why like like straying away from just speaking in, in our language oh. and why are so yeah. many people Ooh. like broke speak broken language yeah. that yeah. we are growing up on yeah. or just yeah. continuing even just continue on learning their own culture right? it's just yeah you know and now because because yeah. the issue is just like okay well yeah sure you might know some bit of punjabi now but what are you continuing on so then that whenever you know when you have your own kids it's just like what mm-hmm. how are you gonna be able to teach those kids yeah then, right? absolutely so, you know what there are so many reasons that i believe that um people our age people a little bit older a little bit younger just completely let go of speaking in their native language and i think that one of them the most simple one is just lack of exposure they spend more we spend more time as human beings a in the beginning of our life with teachers other kids that right Mm. and then as we grow we get jobs we spend the majority of our life then with our colleagues with our bosses with the people we don't have family time left we don't speak we i see my boyfriend for like uh not a lot of time (laughs) i see my colleagues nine hours a day yeah right and i i speak fluent hindi he speaks fluent punjabi we we're sure to communicate with each other in our own languages Mm -hmm. um but i think that with young kids the lack of exposure to their own language the lack of exposure to their own culture Mm -hmm. um i grew up in a predominantly when i was in abbotsford i was in a predominantly white school school. it was completely white Mm. um everyone in my school was white i lost my hindi speaking ability for like six months Mm. um it was horrible <laughs> I was bullied so hard too we're not going to talk about that this time that's a that's a topic for another, another episode yeah. <laughs> another day <laughs> maybe in private <laughs> um so you just don't have that exposure sometimes to be able to speak your language for someone to be able to understand you um and naturally you start to lose interest mm. so once you're exposed to more punjabi more hindi your culture your roots your religion all of these things combined then that's when you start to garner that interest back unless people are making fun of you exactly for speaking that language for trying to be in your culture i would put a lot of oil in my hair when i was young um coconut oil olive oil all these things that are (laughs) (laughs) fantastic for our hair right yeah bullied relentlessly so i stopped right and my hair got worse so (laughs) what happens right so all these things that are so integral to who we are to our culture we lose them if we get made fun of in that early stage of life though yeah. but then we rediscover it at least a lot of us rediscover it when we're entering our adulthood because we realize none of that matters yeah <laughs> they don't matter who yeah. are they to us nobody what's important to me my culture my identity my livelihood and part of that livelihood is my culture, culture my language so yeah i'm gonna fucking speak it yeah i'm gonna tell you i fucking speak it yeah. Yeah. yes i'm gonna watch bollywood movies <laughs> yes i'm gonna listen to punjabi music and yeah, yeah. nobody's gonna stop me and i am proud of who i am and i know you guys are too and i know so much of our community is changing that way but mm-hmm. how we were the lack of exposure and the the being made fun of 
contributed, I'm sure, 90, not I'm sure, I know, yeah. that is 95% of the reason that kids these days, people our age, are not speaking. They don't want to reintegrate into their culture because of what is normal and That's what's so around true. them, what their environment. Mm. If you go to Abbotsford, it's different. If you go to <laughs> Whitehorse, it's different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you go to small town... <laughs> What, what's another small town name? I don't know. Another small yeah. town Sherwood in Alberta. Park. Yeah, and there's, Sherwood yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I used to have this Desi um, friend and she, he lives in Sherwood Park. Yeah. Okay. He is so ashamed of his culture, man. Like he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't, he doesn't want to learn. He doesn't want to try. Like, I'm just like, oh man. Just, what's wrong with you? You assimilated. Yeah. That's yeah. what you did. See, you're what... not Desi anymore. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah I hate that's, that. That's crazy. I think the biggest thing is like, what helped me because of course, I don't, did you go to Punjabi school? Uh, I mean, I was in I was in Punjab. I lived oh, yeah, you're in Punjab. Oh, yeah, no, right. So it's a bit different. Oh, for me. I had to learn Hindi and Punjabi. <laughs> so I mean, I, I mean, you majority of the kids that lived here, they're born and raised here. I mean, I'm pretty sure all of them went to Punjabi yeah. school, right? Mm -hmm. Punjabi school usually, I think, it stopped till grade seven, mm -hmm. and then at that point, your parents just forced you to retake the same grade. It was Headway, no? That was like the main one we went to. Headway. Yeah, Headway, but then really? the, the Godwaras will have their own Punjabi oh, school. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after that, it was just like. Because at a younger age, like uh, during junior high, I went to a Catholic school. Yeah, this guy uh, went to a Catholic school. Yeah, what I don't know. How. I don't know what but the my, happened over Yeah, here. but it was, and then it was just, well, my dad was just more concerned of like, okay, I, you know, I won't go into <laughs> drugs or something like that. So he assumed <laughs> that Catholic school would be the best. School. <laughs> and it just happened to be the Catholic school that I went to was beside a public school. It had oh, more dead. involvement in narcotics and stuff. So like, <laughs> That's hilarious. It was great. But, but when I, I was the only brown, brown guy there. And yeah. so I was heavily, I was heavily into sports. We isolated ourselves so much to a point like it's not normal any, it's not normal anymore to wear a suit or whatever it is outside, unless it's some sort of uh, yeah. gurdwara or we're going to someone's house. That's that's the only time we wear it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a sad thing. Mm -hmm. That's the only time we wear it, our suits or cortes is if we're going to gurdwara or we're going to someone's compound or we're going to some event. That's the only time. Yeah. 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 Back home. Every morning, I would come, I mean, afternoon, I would come from school, take it off. I'm a Magorta Piyama at night time. <laughs> yeah. that's, Aww, would, that's like the most that's comfy precious. thing. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, little with my Ramal, my Judah. Like, yeah. That's what we're going to sleep. That's like. amazing. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we, I grew up around, right? Yeah. So, like, for me, that was normalized. For me, it's easy to say, be like, yo, like, do it and be comfortable with it, right? Mm -hmm. But Or find something that's <laughs> relatable. Like, like I was saying before, uh, kind of saying, trying to say before, it was just like, um, the thing that helped me was trying to be able to relate to someone in the past that has kind of taken a similar route. So mm -hmm. for me, it was like athletics, so it was in sports and all that sort. Mm -hmm. So I kind of mentioned it with my, my dad. Milka Singh. <laughs> Milka Singh. No. Right? Yeah, so yes. I looked I looked on that a lot because of like, you know, it was during, uh, what do you call, 84? Mm -hmm. Was it 84 or 47? I can't remember now. For what? Um, I it, think was separa it was a separation. Mil yeah, yeah. yeah. Milka Singh was in 1947. Oh. 1947. Yeah, so yeah the separation. Was, yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and earlier, then yeah. basically that because of like the traumatic past of like the separation. Yeah, it kind of pushed him even further to become you know get into the Olympics and all that sort. Yeah, while having a judo. Yeah, while wearing yeah, a bug, wearing yeah, a bug yeah. and stuff, and then that was allowed back. Yeah, then. it was. Yeah. In, I think it was in Kolkata. They had a little competition between India and Pakistan, and he 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 beat whoever was in the competition and i believe the president back then actually called the flying sick right mm. just because mm. how happy he was the way he was representing himself his mm -hmm. culture and how he was able to overcome these challenges and i was able to relate to that a lot of that stuff mm -hmm. so what, what i'm trying to say is just that i think a lot of people who are trying to like get back into their culture and have a better understanding is try to find a relatable uh, figure. figure yes right and representation is right. important yeah, yeah. And, and it's just like whether it be music if you like if you love music go into the music um you know listen to more music mm -hmm. um yeah, you know for so young and yeah and i was just like for us especially it was wearing a bug i yeah. mean like nowadays like whether it be dating mm -hmm. whether it be just like just casual walking now you feel embarrassed to wear a bug because you're just so different mm -hmm. um and for me it was just like okay well who do i look up to for you know that wears a turban right mm -hmm. and it was of course milk thing again right mm -hmm. um yeah. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. it was just like a lot of I, I think it's just like nowadays it's just like 
Oh, this is another story. It's just um, my friends were actually talking about like how their hair is thinning out, <laughs> and they're don't like, worry, "My shit going bald, but, but don't worry." But these it. these guys don't wear it, it's gonna happen. But these guys don't wear a bug, right? And they're like, "Oh, you know what?" No, they don't wear a bug. Oh shit! Yeah, they're <laughs> they're like, "Oh, my hair's thinning out. I'll just wear a bug." Also, I was like, "So you're mm-hmm. only gonna wear a th- no? Is so you're gonna hide your insecurities?" Mm-hmm. But I was like, "Do you really know under have an understanding what a bug means?" Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, that's not right. So it's just like. Ha- be able to like really take in the effort to really understand what our culture wa- is about mm-hmm. and what the past has sacrificed for us. Yes, you know? that's absolutely. so true. And, and like, and you kind of going off of what you said. I think me tying my Judah so much, like I tied the shit out of it. It was so tight. That's mm-hmm. why I'm, I'm mm-hmm. here and I said it. I didn't even care. Before I used to be insecure about it because imagine you have hair that are like down to only your knees. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you're seeing it every day as you're growing older. Like it's regressing. Mm. You don't know why. You don't know how to talk to anybody. Mm-hmm. So you're like in your own thoughts. I mean, man, like it's thinning out. Is this that my hair looking like you know, I'm like 60? You know what I mean? Like for me, that was such a hard thing. And that's yeah, the one yeah. thing that I do want to talk to a lot of kids out there. That is that a lot of people struggle with mm-hmm. is like the hair like receding like at a young age, like in mm-hmm. 20s, like late 20s. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm a victim of it. Yeah. You know, and before I used to be so insecure about it. Mm-hmm. I used to hide it. I used to wear topi this that. Now I laugh at it. I like everybody. I'm like, oh, okay, it is what it is. It's yeah. part of me. I yeah, can't. I can't true. help it. Yeah. It's just how it happened. I used to tie the shit out of my Judah. It was so damn tight. And then no. I read later, I realized how that damaged my hair so yeah. much. Right. 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 So, <laughs> so for all the kids out there, I mean, that's just the process of it. You know. Mm-hmm. Now you know like what not to do, what you can do. Mm-hmm. Don't stray away from. Don't think you have a Judah is going to recede your hairline. Yeah. Well, it did to mine, but I, it's no, not going to happen to yours, right? Yeah. So for, and then people that do seek it, are like, oh, I'll just wear it now. It's just like slapping the face to, you know, yeah. to showcase what that really means. Because I told Mo, mm-hmm. my mom did ask me, like, if you want to cut it off, cut it off at age 18. I'm like, hell no. I've been doing this since when? I felt like I was born with this. Yeah. I, came out of, I came out of the yeah. room with this, right? Yeah. So, yeah, man, all the kids out there, don't worry about it, man. Receding hairline is a part of the life. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and worst case to worst, just shave it off. It is what it yeah. is. Yeah, shave yeah. it off. It's yeah. all good. Exactly. You know? But it's even just like, um, you know, just with how our culture is moving forward and stuff, like for, you know, for, uh, for our own future, like in what way do you think that you'll be carrying the culture forward? In that sense, yeah. That's a great question. Yeah. Um, first of all, we, I, Akash and I made a promise that we will speak our languages. Mm. First and foremost, if we have children, we're going to be teaching them our languages. At home, we're going to be speaking our languages. That's bare minimum. Bare yeah. minimum, yeah. Right? Um, then having a deep understanding of who we are individually, mm. understanding our religion, our spirituality, our culture, everything that is intertwined in that, in those elements, being Indian, being Punjabi, um, really understanding the history of who we are, how those, even just how... Um, the relationship and the discomfort between Hindus and Punjabis Jabi. too, mm, like it's a long under, history, it's a long history it's a long and history, yeah. understanding that and conveying that to our children. It's not all butterflies no. and sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> it's not at all. Um, so understanding that, passing that forward as well, not mm. to teach them that this is bad, this is bad. Don't talk to these people. Don't. But just <laughs> yeah. it's so that they're educated. Yeah. They understand who they are, their mm. history, who 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 brought them here. Mm. You know. So Simple. that's part of it. Bollywood movies are a must. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, if you don't watch Bollywood movies, I don't, I don't watch you. I'm not going to talk to you. So <laughs> I love Bollywood. That's such a such a part of who I am. But the old stories, not the new ones. Yeah. I like <laughs> the old ones. Even the, like, the comedian ones back in the day were so much funnier. Yeah, it was everything. So much funnier. Yeah. Love stories. Everything so was funnier. The stories were just phenomenal yeah, it's and pure. Now, now it's run down it's yeah. run down it's yeah. hyper sexualized too it's so much oh my it god is. it's gotten so it much kinda, worse I'm not showing mo- my kids that no, shit no for real I was watching one <laughs> yeah. movie and I'm like <laughs> Change like, that yeah. I'm like, what is going like, on? And imagine watching those with your parents. Like, oh, uh, I know. I'm, I'm, like, so I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I didn't know. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the passing on the old Bollywood stories. Old ones. <laughs> yes, the old ones. <laughs> no. And then pivoting off to like the last thing that we want to discuss with you is. Um, to brown girls that do want to get into business, uh, that want to have their personal branding, you know, give us some advice. Give them some advice that I might be seeking. You know, that want to start off. What are some things that you feel like um, that helped you to get to the point where you are today? Yeah, sure. Thank you for asking. <laughs> me. I'm so happy to be here. 
Um, so all of this is actually super fresh for me. This It hasn't even been a year since I acquired this following. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll start with, actually, no, TikTok. I, I started with TikTok in mm-hmm. 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started to build a following through there, just posting consistently um, here and there. It wasn't very, it wasn't actually very consistent. But for maybe a month, I would post every week, twice a week. Yeah. Um, and then I would just naturally build a following on there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I stopped with TikTok. It just wasn't really doing anything for me for a while Mm -hmm. then on instagram um so i never really cared to be in the influencer space or in the industry at all but then i started to think about how there's so much freedom of time Mm -hmm. there's so much freedom of where you can work from it's all online from your phone from your laptop right and something that's really important to me Mm -hmm. is experiencing different cultures traveling um being everywhere soaking in like how people are different and you can't do that without seeing different people people. without traveling to different countries different cities different places um and you can't do that if you have a job you have (laughs) to request time off Yeah. yeah yeah oh (laughs) <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It is. Oh God, I just don't even want to think about that. I do still um, work a nine to five. I do love my job though. It's such a phenomenal job to have. But mm. um, on the side, uh, I've definitely been um, focusing on Instagram and YouTube. Those are my primaries. But how I started on Instagram is I switched my thinking to just exploring the side of, okay, but if I do this, then I can work from anywhere. I can Mm. do anything from anywhere, um, possibly, hopefully. (laughs) So one day I kind of just woke up and I was like, I'm going to start being consistent on Instagram. And it was reels for me. Mm. Um, Instagram really pushes reels. So I just woke up and I was like, I'm going to start batching content today. I'm going to make a bunch of videos, um, take in some trending sounds, put uh, put my... Sorry, post my tape. Yeah. Um, yeah, so do that kind of thing and start posting at least bare minimum one reel a day. And I, as soon as I, as soon as I started doing that, um, I posted one or two reels a day, every day for wow. six months. Wow. Grew to 20K followers. Um, mm. So clearly something was working, right? And just the power of consistency. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, wow. And then from there, I was like, okay, there's really something here. And then from there, I start to think about, okay, now I'm growing my audience. What do I want to convey? What do I want to talk about? What do I want to, if I could make one type of video for the rest of my life, what would it be? Would Mm -hmm. it be beauty about makeup tutorials? What what would it be about? Would it be about business? So I kind of just crafted my content strategies, my content pillars. um, And they consist of like talking about marketing, beauty, um, talking about like just having makeup tutorials that I want to post, just things that are important to me, things that are fun for me, you know, Mm -hmm. things that I wouldn't get tired of posting about. And so I have a circle of content that I consistently post and it's always within those realms and they always do well. Mm -hmm. They always, always do well. As I started to learn how to edit my videos, how to cater to the brain rot, you know, how (laughs) to like just get people's attention very quickly, then that's how I started to grow at a skyrocketing pace. Mm -hmm. And then that was Instagram. But from there, then I realized that's not really where the intense money is. Mm. Um, and I still love Instagram. It doesn't That doesn't really matter to me. Yeah. But I realized that if I really wanted to make it a full-time thing, then what would be important for me to pursue is YouTube. Mm-hmm. Because oh. that there, you're getting the ad revenue and you're getting the brand deals brand at deals. the same oh, time. Okay. It's not just the brand deals on Instagram and TikTok because we're in Canada. We're not yeah. earning anything, anything from those platforms. Yeah. Yeah. So I switched to YouTube and I only just started YouTube in like mid-January of this year. Mm. Um, And I told myself I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to post once a week, every week, except for Australia. I was in for three weeks, Mm. but I've been pretty consistent and blew up. My first video got 72,000 views um, and it just kept going from there. I was so consistent with my shorts. I recycled all of my content from Instagram and TikTok put it on my shorts, Mm -hmm. natural growth. If you know something's going to work, why change it? Yeah. Right. So I posted all my shorts on there. Um, I made content on YouTube that I really wanted young people to see. Mm -hmm. Like I really wanted, cause a lot of the content that I post on YouTube, that's long form. It's the stuff that blows up is the life advice stuff. So the the things that I wish I could tell my 20 year old self or things that don't do this, do this, Mm -hmm. that stuff while I'm like doing my makeup in the meantime, always like it does so well. And I could do that for the rest of my life, you know, like just (laughs) put on cute makeup and talk about things that are important to me. I could do that every day for the rest of my life. I would not mind. Um, So that's where I really found something that I loved, but 
in saying that I could do it for the rest of my life. Actually, I don't know if I could. I'm <laughs> backtracking a little bit, but part of YouTube and part of my Instagram strategy is to place my own jewelry design. So I'm going to be rebranding, um, redoing that jewelry thing because I found okay. so much previous Six success, success in that. Yeah. Okay. So I can use myself as an influencer. Like if I, as soon as I'm wearing a certain ring or a jewelry piece people are like where's it where's that from where'd you get this from where'd you <laughs> so in designing my own jewelry i'm i don't just have the youtube revenue i have the youtube revenue and i have the revenue from the e-commerce e of people yeah. that are buying my jewelry, jewelry that i designed yeah. so it's all part of a long-term plan that i really like i have no social life yeah. <laughs> this is all i do but yeah. i just love it so much right like seeing how my dad is thriving now and just he pursued so many different things but he was able to find real success in whatever he chose really inspired me mm -hmm. and i know that i can do the same thing i know that any woman any man is so capable of doing the exact same thing mm -hmm. literally anything is possible i tell this to all my friends <laughs> everyone it really is. Yeah. you can do anything but people are so limited in their beliefs they think that no i'm gonna go to school i'm gonna get a job i'm gonna retire at 70 years old and that's my life and it makes me so sad because <laughs> yeah. you are capable of so, so much things. more. So much potential. So, so much more. You have so much to give. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So my thing to give is my jewelry designs and my cute little girly <laughs> glamorous things. And I just love that so much. You know, it's so much fun to me. I've always been a creative person. Yeah. But, wow, I didn't. I still haven't given my advice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's all good. I talked about this forever. No, it's yeah. good that you're giving a backstory of how you, everything, you know, kind of molded together, right? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, good yeah. to inform the audience about it. Yeah. Right. Um, my main thing that I would tell to any young woman, any young man, um, get up and do the work. Like, mm. get up, make some time, no matter how busy you are. Like, I put lazy. myself... Yeah. <laughs> I put myself through school, right? My parents were struggling. I put myself through university. I worked three jobs at one point and I had full-time classes. I was doing so many things at once. I was booking like modeling gigs on weekends. I, there were so many things that I was doing and I was making time for all of this because th I had to. There's no choice, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're exposed to that and when you're doing all of these things because you have to work hard, then life just naturally gets easier as you grow. Mm, yeah. Literally now I'm like, I have one job. I'm chilling, you know, I'm like performing so well there and everybody's like, why are you doing the work of two people? And I'm like, this is all I've ever known. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like this is just what I do. It's just always what I've had to do. So naturally I just do so much. Mm. Um, and I get home, I work on YouTube, I work on my marketing strategies, I work on like my current um, business right now with the jewelry, what's happening next, which is coming soon. I'm okay, so excited okay. about nice. that. Nice. Excited to see that. So, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be so cool. And that's just all I do, but just get up and do yeah. the work. Stop making excuses. I cannot take people who will make excuses for mm. everything. Like don't, I, I used to be empathetic with them. I used to understand okay. and try to understand. Mm -mm. And yeah. you know, this person has this going on. It's just like, hey, uh, now it's uh, draining to me. Yeah. <laughs> like if you're serious about wanting my advice, like this is what I tell my marketing <clears throat> clients too. Like the first session that I have with them is like, if you're serious about wanting my advice, tell me you're gonna work on this every day. Exactly. Mm. Like tell me you're gonna, do this, you're gonna think about it bare minimum, like think about where you're gonna do next. And this is something, this is your baby. Like the, it yeah, is, you have to, yeah. it, it yeah. has to be so important to you. And if you're not putting in the work, we're done. Facts. I'll refund you, whatever it is, I don't care. But if you keep making excuses, then you're not getting anywhere. You're not mm -hmm. doing anything. Like you, if you're fine with a simple life, some people are, that's totally fine. Then that's good, but I'm the wrong person First to talk to you about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So get up do the work don't make excuses because someone out there is working five times as hard as you yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and they're not making a single excuse there's kids in india who are doing the craziest grinding. thing they're grinding, grinding so yeah. hard same. and you're telling me you can't do this because you have an extra class that you're taking <laughs> at school like mm, okay go fuck yourself Miss yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Miss you with yeah we can't be friends <laughs> Um, but at the same time, I understand that some people's situations really are that dire. Like I do understand that sometimes people's mental load is too much. Mm -hmm. So first, definitely figure out where you are in life. If you have the time capacity to put real energy into this line, because business is not easy. Yeah. It's so hard. I'm working 24 seven, dude. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I get two hours of sleep and I go to work and I do it all over again. Like it's not easy, mm -hmm. but if you put in the work now, your life is going to be smooth Golden. sailing yeah so true. your entire life you're going to be set for life right so and that's something that i learned from my dad like before i'd be like mm, i don't know no i want to enjoy i want to do this and that <laughs> yeah. right 
But now as I grow, I really understand the importance of that. Um, I always did, you know, having to do so many things at once. But now is really when it's hitting because <laughs> the fruits of my labor, I'm, I'm getting to eat them, right? Exactly. Yeah. They're yeah, coming yeah. to me. And now I'm like, wow, people my age aren't just like whatever they're doing. They're partying every weekend. And that's fine. Craziness. Like, mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer, though, in enjoying. Um, enjoying because you, you need to, both yep. you definitely do have yep. to have a balance you have to you love do. yeah you have to have your passion you have to have your business or whatever it is that you love to do yeah. but if you don't go out there and make your social skills and build a network and build connections and go talk to people how yeah. are you going to be in the leadership yeah. space yeah. Yeah. how no, are true. you how are you going to tell people communicate with them what they need to hear yeah. in a gentle way or in a firm way whatever it is those are essential skills that you need to have in order to move forward mm. in any space any industry mm. any like that's why um my i have some engineering friends and they're in fucking brilliant people right <laughs> yeah. um she's brilliant but one thing that she's been coming to me with is how do i how do i communicate that i need this for my boss how do i communicate that i can't do this i can't do this this is too much and i'm like okay sit down do this whatever but it's just a testament to the power of how important communication, yes. hmm. social skills, how important that is. And mm -hmm. a lot of kids that are homeschooled actually don't get that at all, right? Yeah, very true. They don't know how to talk to people. Mm -hmm. So learn how to talk to people, build your passion, figure out what that is. You can't do that ex unless you, you experiment. Have yeah. You yeah. have to try new things, you have to experiment, you have to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. If you're making incredible music, say your first song is trash, then the next one is trash, but it's a little bit better. And then it keeps going and then you have an incredible song Who's going to see your progress, progress if yeah, you don't yeah. ever put it out? Yeah. Of course, people are going to say your first song is trash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then by the time that you're doing amazing, then no one's going to know that you put in so much work. They're going to think, oh, he's born with it. There's so <laughs> yeah. much talent. This is yeah, that, yeah, yeah. this is exactly. that, whatever. Yeah. That you have to expose yourself and you can't be afraid of starting and being bad at something at the bottom. You have to be okay and open with starting at the bottom and working your way up. But people don't want to be seen so, trying. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. They don't want to be embarrassed. embarrassed. And that's one thing I feel like I've always been really shameless in that area. Like <laughs> I've never had an ounce of like embarrassment. If I'm putting myself out, my my first those t-shirts that I was telling you guys about, mm. I look back at them now and I'm like, like I put that out. What, what is that drawing? <laughs> what, what is that? Right. But I was so I didn't have that fear of being seen, and I didn't have that like, mm, what are people gonna think of me? What are they gonna say? Oh, I want to sell my art online on this, on a mug, on a T-shirt, whatever. What are they gonna say? I never had yeah. that. Yeah. And I think that really contributed to where I'm at now, what I'm not afraid to do now, and what I was able to find what I love. love right. Yeah. So mm. I think that that those are all the things that I would tell young people now. Yeah. Do what you love. Find it. Build those social skills and do the fucking work. Fuck. Yeah. Otherwise, don't talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> no, for real. I, yeah. yeah. I think moral of the story is, uh, don't be fucking lazy, man. Yeah, y'all out there. <laughs> don't be fucking lazy. Yeah. Stop being lazy. Get your ass off the couch. Don't think you're not you're not capable of it. You are perfectly capable of it if you're willing to try. Mm -hmm. I think Zubi put it perfectly. Uh, we're all capable of great things. It's whether you want to put ourselves out there. Yeah. It's the underlining factor in accomplishing uh, the greatness that's within you. you mm -hmm. know, that's the one quote I live by, Les Brown, that says it. Mm -hmm. Greatness is within you. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I don't care who you are, what position you're in life, 40, 50, 60, 20, 10. Mm -hmm. Don't matter what age you're at. Greatness is within you. Just go out and do it, man. And, yeah. and uh, life will thank you for it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. love that. Yeah. And and that no, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. No, oh, sorry. Sorry. no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, finish, go ahead. Finish. I was just going to say, anyone can talk. Anyone one can put those words out anyone can talk to anybody about what they want to do mm -hmm. but you just need to shut up and you need to do it <laughs> yeah, and yeah. not tell anyone you need to put in the work put in the action and then everyone will see naturally yeah, yeah. yeah no exactly like be curious i think that's a big part too is a lot of people kind of jump to conclusions they're like oh i want people to do it but just yeah. be curious don't give a damn what people say absolutely right just stick to you know what you what you you know what you want to do, do enjoy, it. enjoy mm -hmm. it and be you know be proud of how far you come and how yeah. what you're accomplishing too right so yeah. it's just yeah, oh, yeah. i love that yeah. <laughs> on that note guys appreciate y'all thank you thank you so for taking your time out of your day thank you it means no a lot problem. and then uh yeah go on, you know it's, it's gonna be a long podcast yeah. but you know thank, <laughs> it's all good thank you q fails thank you adrian <laughs> Adrian's obviously saying, like get me out of here yeah, yeah. So, thank you for tuning in all Have right good one, guys. peace <laughs>